All right, so at this point, uh, we've got this working, hopefully. It's very exciting when it does, and it works even the best when it works on a real device. So I, I showed that a moment ago on my camera here, and on that share app, you saw that I then uh, showed that tweet, so it's a real tweet. Um, I was looking at the documentation a bit from the developer, and I noticed uh, that uh, the latest version is a little bit different. So the, what I had shown you is in the documentation, and it's more toward um, this particular one here. This whole chunk are different ways to share the old way. Share only a message, share message and subject, and the one we did is one of these over here, down here somewhere. Um, probably, probably the third one from the bottom. Uh, a message, and then there's no, and so forth. So it's one of these down here. Maybe the maybe the last one here, the one we did. And this is a little variation also because then the code is built into the button, which we want to avoid. We did it the better way, where we've got an, a button which in, with an ID, and then the trigger in JavaScript to launch this. They embedded the window dot plugins right into the button, which is not good practice because. The way we're doing it is better in that all of our JavaScript code is in a JavaScript file. All of our CSS code is in a CSS file. All the HTML is in an HTML file. For a quick and dirty example here, they mix the JavaScript and the HTML in one, which could cause problems. But what I'm getting at is I'm seeing that the author has said, says now that there's a new version, a new way to do this. And I was looking at it. If you'd like, you can change your code, but taking a look at what his code now says, it's still going to be like this window dot plugins dot social share but now he says share with options seems to be the new preferred way we did social sharing dot share he seems to say this new version share with options and it takes options comma on success on error so instead of all six of those parameters it seems to be that they're all tied together into one options field, and then your callbacks right there. And the example that he's doing is a JSON formatted variable. The options that he's talking about down here are right here. Variable is created equals JSON. Open close curly braces. Message, colon, the message. Subject, colon, and so forth. So instead of the way we did it, where it's line by line of everything, it gets put together into one JSON object. And the documentation says these are the parameters you can use. All of those get saved into an options variable, and then that options is just passed right there. And then on success is defined right here. On success, it's a function. Console log, show this. Now it's got it completed and it's got an app. In theory, now it's supposed to, I guess, tell you what app the user used and then an error message, and if it's an error, display that. So it's a variation, it's an updated version of our code. We can basically copy and paste it as is into our project. I guess with a little tweaking and it'll work. That'll be version 3. We'll get to that. So ours works. I guess we're using the slightly older way. That's okay. Uh, we're seeing here that we can add the, the newer way later. I'm going to move on from social sharing. I've got that working pretty well. Any general questions then about the social sharing plugin? Again, this is just someone that you know saw this issue and wanted to fix it and therefore gave out some free code and everyone can use it. Probably somewhere around here there's a donate button. Right there, donate. So it's free and if you want to give them a few dollars you know, a hard-working developer giving out something for free? Open source. What's that? Oh, all their money. Yeah. You should. <laughs> so I want to contribute to my pension fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. <coughs> so you can also go follow him on Twitter. Or at the very least, go on Twitter and send them a tweet and say, I love your plugin. It's great. And then he might say, great, there's the donate button. Um, so this plugin uh, is really good. Uh, we've got it working now. Let's uh, shift gears now over to dealing with these extra plugins that we don't need. 
We've got too many plugins on our project. We're asking for too many permissions. I just had someone um, tell me a few days ago um, that she doesn't download any apps that ask for things she doesn't expect, even if all her friends tell her, this is a great app. And she says, well, why does this need to use my camera? So she doesn't download it. Here's what we need to do. Go back to go back to um, terminal. I'm in my project, and let's type taco plugin. This will list my plugins. Let's take a look. Let's take a list of what plugins we've got. Taco plugin. And these are the various plugins. We have the ability to check the battery, use the camera, the console, etc. Here's social sharing. So all of these are the plugins that have been added to our project. Uh, I know that we're not going to use camera in this project. We may do it later for version 3, but for right now I don't want to scare people that this app is going to take a photo of them secretly. So we're going to remove a plugin. Taco, plugin, remove, and then we have to say the name of the plugin, its package name, which is right here. Cordova dash plugin dash whatever. So dash camera, not with the version number or anything else. It's just Cordova dash plugin dash geolocation. That's what we're removing. First, Cordova dash plugin dash camera make sure you spell it right of course press enter it's going to uninstall it from our Android project and browser because we've got both remember <coughs> yes is it better to do it by default not include these things? when you create a taco project from the first time you have no plugins we asked for all of them just so that we can play with them. But when we start off from scratch, we will just add the ones we need. In the old days of Taco slash PhoneGap slash Cordova, it used to give you all of the plugins first, and then we had to take them off. After they got to version <coughs> 3, now it's the opposite. We have to add the plugins that we want to use. It's on version 6 now, I think. so. That was the old days, you know, the ancient days, a year and a half ago. Now, uh, the plugin, um, we have to add them manually. And we start off with, I think we just start off with the, with the whitelist plugin, which we do want to keep. So it's removing the. the plugin oh, that's, uh, that's for our list. That was related to the content security policy. Remember, we had said that. Um, our app might not want to open an external website unless it's in the whitelist. So um, we do want that one because, depending on our app, we do want to load up external websites. This is taking a bit, but what we can do is we can string these together. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to type plugin, remove Cordova plugin camera, space, Cordova plugin. Um, media capture, space, Cordova plugin, geolocation. I can string as many as I want of these together at once to save me some time here. Eventually I get a success. So here's what I mean. Taco, plugin, remove, Cordova, dash, plugin. They all have the same format, dash. And then we'll take a, a quick overview here. I'm going to make a note on the paper here. Battery. Do we need to check the, st the status of the battery? Does our app currently check the status of the battery? We never asked to do that, so I'm going to remove that one. Remove console. I mean, uh, remove camera. Console. That's for us as a developer to see this console output. Um, I'm still kind of iffy to leave this one on or off. Uh, I'm going to leave it on because I'm going to keep working with the console, but perhaps eventually when I do upload it to 
the app stores, I might not need it. So I'm, I'm going to leave console alone. Contacts. We are not asking for people's contacts, so let's not scare them. Um, device. We need device because we're checking the Android version code. If it's too low, don't show pouch. So we need device. Device motion and device orientation. We are not using that one. We're not detecting if a person is, you know, doing the the, the motion um, accelerometer and all of that. That is independent with the map. That one's uh, is geolocation. So this one's more about detect if someone goes vertical or horizontal. We've our, got our la our app locked to portrait anyway. We we're not going to be able to go portrait or horizontal to do anything about it. So we won't use device motion or orientation. Notification was the one about making unique pop-ups and um, prompts and such. Uh, I believe we've got one of those, don't we? Don't we have some pop-ups appearing to gather data? So we'll leave that one. Not contact, we don't want that one. File, uh, we don't need that one. We're not accessing the um, the memory card and the and the file system really. Same thing with file transfer. Geolocation, we need that one. That's what's making our map work. We'll leave that one alone. Globalization, we we don't need that one. We're not using it at the moment. That is, uh, that's uh, supposed to be for for us to to have a multilingual app. It's, it's a bit of a setup, and I'll get to it maybe in version 4. So uh, we're going to leave it off for the moment. In-app browser, what's that one again? Exactly, when we show our classes live from the college's website in a little web browser, that's in-app browser, so we'll leave that one. Media and media capture are related to that. Recording audio from the microphone, recording video from the camera. It's not doing either of those, so let's turn that off. Our app at the moment is not requesting to check network information. We should program it for that, just like we did for device. If, it's a, if the device number is too low, don't show pouch. We haven't dealt with anything about, like, what if the person has no network connection. The map may or may not work. It may work weird without, uh, without, without a network. Network information is about that, to check. Do we have a network, yes or no, and deal with it. We haven't actually done anything with it, but in theory we will, and the map does access the network, so we'll leave this one. Splash screen? Yes, we're keeping this one. We've got a splash screen going on, definitely. Status bar. Uh, let's remove that one. We're not doing anything with the status bar uh, at the top of at the top or the bottom of your device. We're not really loading anything in the status bar. Remove that. Our app currently has no vibration. We'll remove that one. Um, whitelist. We leave that one. What's that? When we were experimenting with this stuff a while ago, we did have that, but we, we didn't keep it. But we could. We could leave it, you know, every time you save an app, it could buzz. I mean, every time you save a class, it could buzz. But we're not using it. And social sharing. Um, yeah, if we find it, we can just reactivate it. And definitely social sharing. So we, we're going to remove most of these plugins. Yes. So let's say you remove migration and it turned out you shouldn't have. Now you could put it back in, but how do you even know that you removed it? By so actually that's... testing it or by seeing the console output, or uh, oftentimes what would happen is since vibration, just like all of this stuff, is a JavaScript command, we had something like uh, window.notification.vibrate. Okay, if we remove the vibration plugin, it doesn't understand what notification.vibrate means anymore, and therefore 
you'll get error messages or your code will shut down. It won't behave like we expected. So we will have some sort of way that we'll know it didn't work, most likely because something will will break. But you do know that the, uh, the, the class button that you created in your big app, when you put down the app, it vibrates. Surely you that just to demonstrate that you didn't But did we keep that code in there? OK. So I do see a vibrate in the code line 26. That's connected to that get URL, which which we are using. Yeah, we are using get URL. Let's err on the side of caution and let's leave it then, because I do see. Well, either or, we can remove the plugin and remove the code, sure. or leave both. Uh, I'm going to leave them both. Yes? So when I open an app, or I download an app, I'll open, open it a lot of times, it'll just ask me, do you have, give permission to use your contacts and, and notifications? So does that mean that, that my app, no matter what I say, will automatically ask the user? Or is, is that something that I program? I think, actually, most don't most apps say, this app wants to use these. And I don't think we can say yes or no to individual things. It's a yes or no. For the whole list, exactly. So that this is going to be the same thing for our app here. Even if we left everything on, it's about to say, this app wants to use all of these things, yes or no. But, but um, can I, when, when the app was created, did the developers set it up so that the app would ask me those questions? Or does the system just automatically ask those questions? The system asks. Okay. The developer has chosen to use these plugins, and then the system will alert the user this app wants to use these features. All right, so we're going to cut then um, remove Cordova plugin battery space, Cordova, just to string them all together, Cordova dash plugin. Oh, battery dash status. Uh, yep, battery status. Uh, space contacts Cordova dash plugin. Yes. Yes, and then it'll complain and it says, you know, can't find <coughs> plugin XXS. I think it'll it'll crash at this point and not do any of them. So we get the idea here. Um, since I'm going to type this over and over, here's my here's my cheat. I'm going to write it in elsewhere over here, and I copy and paste maybe. <coughs> So I'm copying and pasting. You can't do control V, you do have to right click it. So if you typed all of those properly, it will go through this process and remove them all sequentially.
and it might um, if you're trying to remove one that does that doesn't exist you'll get a little error Which I think was in the app for the Amazon store. The list that uh, you started this one was started. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was that generated by by them or did you do it with them before It was generated uh, in our config XML file. Um, oh. It's in there basically when we added all of the plugins last month. Um, that information is saved somewhere in here in the project and then Amazon saw that file and saw this app wants to use all of these permissions and then it shows up on screen automatically from Amazon. Um, yes. Last year I went to the NAB show in Las Vegas, the National Association of Broadcasters. So they, they had social media and the major broadcasters at the same convention at the same time for the first time. Hmm. I wanted to see how well they went and they did. I bet. They had um, the guy that uh, he founded the antivirus that starts with an A. Uh, Avast? Yeah. McAfee? Yeah. McAfee. Yeah. John yeah. McAfee. So that John McAfee did a presentation and he had somebody come up with their, with their cell phone. And he said, okay, I just want you to you know, go into this app and, and just put in the phone number of somebody that you know, is close to you. And so the guy put in the phone number, and then he went on his app, and he made it dial that phone number, which then looked like it was an incoming call from the person that made his contact list. So he, of course, would answer it. So when he answered it, it took a picture of it. Oh, wow. And then he showed it was secure. But it yeah. was interesting about, you know, what plugins you have. Exactly. This is, a, this is, there's so many security issues nowadays, and this is one of them. We're asking, you know, we're asking for all of these features, permission for all of these features on these little devices here, which have cameras and microphones and GPS devices and all that built in. So that's why we want our app to use the minimum amount and not scare people. You know, I believe, I believe all you guys, you're not going to use it for anything malicious, but someone that doesn't know you and says, why is this requesting camera? Why is this requesting microphone features? So yeah. it's I pretty scary. Because it asks for my contacts. Yeah, exactly. In the guise of wanting you to share your app with other, I mean, the Pandora app to your friends and family, it's, it's going to ask you to do that, which might be intrusive. But uh, more of these apps are getting intrusive, unfortunately, because there's money, there's gold in them, our hills, in our pockets. So eventually, perhaps here this worked, and then uh, let's do taco plugin, and let's see if this cut it down to the basics. So uh, Tony and Joe, I know you guys are excited back there, Tony and, and Joseph. <laughs> Joseph and Tony, I know you guys are excited back there, but uh, Sorry, let's move on. Okay. So here I, I did, I ran taco plugin again just to show me what I've got and because I might have missed one or two but I've got uh, console device, oh I missed file so I need to go back and do file. Uh, a couple of these are dependent upon each other. Uh, I believe file and file transfer are dependent upon each other, maybe that's why I missed it. So that's why I'm, good thing I double checked it. So taco plugin remove uh, Cordova dash plugin dash file in app browser good network info splash screens oh I forgot status bar vibration what did we decide about network info anyway yeah we'll get to it in version four um, well if we're gonna get to it in version four I would leave it out because it's not gonna do anything and people are gonna Get weirded out by it. So okay, we'll we'll cut network info and I forgot um, uh, status bar. 
So we'll see. It, does, it sort of feels that it goes faster when you chain them all together. So after we're done with that, then we'll do build. Actually, before we do build, we have to edit our config XML file, don't we? Our config XML file is still pointing to Android version code 1. This is our different, this is version code 2. So we'll do that in just a moment. What was the whitelist again? That one is uh, the ability to be able to open external websites and external resources outside of our app, like on a web browser or on a website. Because in theory, uh, we could have our we could have some sort of JavaScript code on a server, and then. Um, Someone hacks the server, puts in their own code onto that file, and then uh, messes with our app. So if we have the whitelist, we are approving the particular networks that we can use, particular servers. Okay, so as that is going, um, we need to edit our config XML file. We've got a new version of our app. The app stores will not accept the, the app uh, if you don't increment your version code number. So as soon as this finishes, we'll do that. Uh, let's get ready to open the config.xml file in the root of our project outside of the WW folder. Eventually this will finish, and then we can um, edit the config XML file. Yes. Console device geo browser splash vibrate and whitelist. Oh, and social sharing. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight plugins. Did I? Notification? Um, yeah, we kept vibrate. We kept the vibration notification. That's the one that we saw with not. That's the one that we did see the the vibration. Is the notification a pop-up window from code within the app? Or is it something that you let come in from the outside? It's from it's from within the app. Uh, yeah, notification dialogues. I did take it out, um, but I don't think we're. What, what did we say about it a while ago? Um, I'm going to put it back in then, just um, to be safe. So I will. If you removed the one of. I'm going to put back taco, plugin, add, Cordova, dialogues, 
dialog boxes, notifications. That one's named weird because in quotes it's notifications, but in the package it's dialogs. And anyway, this is a good practice to put it back. Taco plugin add Cordova dash plugin dash dialogs. I don't see word notification. It, uh, it might not have that code. It might be named slightly different also. It might be named dialogue. In any event, I can add or remove that, but I'm going to move on here now to uh, let's open the config XML file. Go back to the root of your project and let's edit config.xml. Basically, we need to edit line 2. We have Android version code. We need to increment that by whole numbers to 2. We have version 1 of our code that we uploaded last week, and we're going to upload version 2. That one is the required one, and te technically the optional one is the one that says version, but we should do that one too. Here then we have to decide how we're going to increment this, because obviously we could put 2 dot whatever, and do this however we want. But I'm going to say that the large whole numbers, the first number here, is going to be like a big change. Like brand, like a lot of new features, like a new interface, you know, a big change. Usually that whole number is a big change. And you have the smaller increments here. I'm going to leave it as a 1 in the 1.x branch. It's not really that different. I've got a couple new features, but it's not really different. So I'm going to leave 1 point. But I then will put 1. 1.1. It's it is a it is an increment from the previous version, but it's not so big. But I want to increment it here, and then the this little like build number here uh, with today's date. I'm using this as as dates, so this will be the 26th. So those are the two things I changed. But make sure you change the Android version code at the beginning. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to save all my files and close all my files and Notepad. Back on Taco, and now I need to pull up my instruction number eight because I don't have it memorized. Instruction number eight is signing. We've got to sign our APK again with our developer certificate. Hopefully I wrote my password down. Um, so the handout is saying we need to run taco in build mode. in the section here, build your app for release. So we need to do this. Taco build Android dash dash release. And yes, there is this weird phantom double dashes attached to nothing. Dash dash release space dash dash space dash dash key store pointing to the key store. Space dash dash alias and then the alias in your key store. If you follow the instructions back at the beginning here, I tried to keep it simple by using your last name lastname.jks and then lastname alias. So my particular one. Oh, and then the path to this. So I put c colon backslash jks. I put that on the c drive uh, in the example, but on my in my flash drive. I've got my smith.jks file on the F drive, the root of the F drive. I will type taco build android space dash dash release space dash dash space dash dash key store, one word, lowercase 
equals, I'm doing f colon backslash, in my case, smith.jks. space dash dash alias, in my case Smith. Again, unless you have the Smith key, you can't use my exact code here. Enter on that and uh, let's see what errors. I mean, let's see this happen smoothly. People sometimes ask me, uh, okay, well, I have my I have my key store, my JKS file. Can I change the alias inside of it? Can I change the password? And I keep telling myself, I'm going to look that up. And I haven't looked it up, so I, I don't know. Uh, but maybe someone can look it up and you get 10 points extra credit. Can you change your key store or your alias or your password? So it is popping up here. It is asking me. The line here did, did find my key store. Let's see if one of these that I wrote down here is the correct one. What does it say? It, just, it looks like there's different situations you can handle them in different ways. And it looks like you can change your alias passwords. Oh, that's useful because sometimes um, sometimes people forget those. It said I wanted to give this to a different developer. Oh, sure. And is it uh, is it a process through the command prompt, like how we created it? The reason that you know I'm hesitant about that is because it's uh, you know it's encrypted keys and all of that. So if it was very easy to change the password, then I would think, how secure is that? Alright, so eventually uh, build successful, three minutes, and my output says android-release.apk. So I did remember my password. And uh, it let me run this, this release build, and then I can go into my apps 
folder in the platforms Android build outputs APK, which is right there on the handout. It says go into platforms Android build outputs APK. And now I see um, Android release. I'm going to copy that over to. Maybe this is part of the reason that some of us are getting that problem that it keeps asking for the JKS. Maybe instead of copying it, maybe I should move it. Or maybe one of these others is something about that. So I'm going to try to move it this time. I'm going to move, I'm going to cut the Android release out of it back up to apps. And I've got, from last week, I've got my SDC1 release. And this one I'll call. We both got the same date and time stamp. They do. Let me check something here. My STC2. Uh, they do have that stamp there, but um, accessed. Am I in the right folder? Nope. I'm getting it out of the 26 folder. There's a good eye. Um, yeah, I went into the 21 folder. 26, 426. Forms, Android, build outputs, EPK. And yep, this is about today's. Where are you, where are you moving that to? I just moved it outside to the top level. Of uh, my, I've got my apps folder on my F drive. Oh, okay. That's where I'm storing my finished APKs. And so here I just changed the name to put the name of my app to. Um, the, the App Store won't care, actually. You can use the exact same name. But I'm uh, keeping different versions of it here just in case because we can we can see that we can actually release different versions of the APK. For some users, we can release one version with less features, and for other users, we can release it with more features if we wanted to get that complex. So we've gone through the process of doing that build again as a release version, and then now we'll go on to uh, uploading. Any general questions at this point? Yes. So speaking of security, are you, because I, I mean, do you know of people that are able to crack into the code of that? Yeah, you are able to reverse engineer this stuff. Uh, perhaps not perfectly, but people can pirate APKs. You know, if you go to some CD parts of the internet, people will have, here's the APK to download, you know, World of Warcraft or whatever, without paying for it. Uh, so people can crack this stuff. Uh, but the process that we've gone through is supposed to make it secure to various degrees. And they keep updating the tools once in a while to make them more secure, but someone always finds out a way to do it.